Hagatha, you look ravishing. My name is Madge Weinstein. I'm a lesbian. Well, no, I'm not a lesbian. I, I was a lesbian. Now I'm a female to male transgender. That's my, that's my big news. You might notice that I have breasts still. That's because I didn't want to do top surgery because what if I change my mind? So anyway, my name is Madge still. I still am a woman. I, I mean, I'm not a woman. I'm a man, but I still use she, her pronouns because I don't want to be tied to the patriarchy. I am delighted to present my co-host, Hagatha, Hagatha von Taterbugs. She's a, a, she hasn't been on video in a, at least a decade. Welcome, Hagatha. Long time. You may love you long uh-huh. time. How are you? I'm good, Hagatha. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm a little uh, schwitzy because it's 100 degrees out. And I'm um, a little nervous about my, my new look. You know, now this is really my coming out bowl because I'm no longer a lesbian per se. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a female to male transgender and my mind's a little slow, so it's hard to conjugate my own pronouns. And I sometimes forget what I am or who I am. And also the facial hair. Uh, I'm a little, uh, how do I look? Let me just start there. Do I look okay? I know you say Jews well, don't pretty- age well, but. Well, well, hon, your face looks okay, but the rest of you looks kind of fat. Well, I am obese. Is that breasts? Is that all you? Well, yeah. Don't you like my, my titties and my Roar t-shirt? Roar? That means I uh, uh, I can take it. You could have put on a nice sequin blouse for me so you yeah. look like your well, mother. Uh, normally I would, but remember, I'm female to male, so I'm a man, uh, Hagatha, so... Men don't generally wear women's clothes unless I want to be like that one on Drag Race, and I could be a man dressed as a woman. But then it's like what that. What's her name? Uh, Lebowski. Got Mick. Yeah. Got Mick. Uh huh. So then it's like Victor Victoria, and it's like Inception, where you're a man who's pretending to be a woman who's pretending to be a man. I get so confused as it is. I'm an older gal. Oh, look at those armpits, Hagathird. That's something. You've got some. Uh, I'm going the European route. Biden's over there, so. I see, and I see you've got very sinewy Take arms. Take to no Have you been working out? Your arms look very sinewy. You've been working out. Looks like Madonna when she was in her working out phase. Yeah, but the face. Looks like raptor arms. And I am a velociraptor. I'm curious about your hair. It looks like it's made out of I don't know what those like cheese doodles. Is that what? What is that made of? Or Rat tails, maybe? I, I don't understand the hair. Can you explain that a little? Well, it's kinky. Is it? So it's... It's black. It's a black black wig. But it looks brown. I saw it at the store, and it was on sale, so I thought, do I want to be black or do I not? And I do have big lips, so I thought, why Wait, not make oh, the okay. jump? And I did. First of like all, it? well, I don't. I thought you meant black as in the color. You mean black as in racism, which I don't. No, I don't like racism. I like the wig, but it does give me the willies because it looks like those those snack foods that I don't particularly care for because they're so full of processed, uh, you know, chemicals. I don't like that sort of thing, Hangatha. But but I'm glad it looks good on you. Uh, can you back up? I want to see your beautiful new dress. You can stand and model S and M if you want. Look at that beautiful dress. My goodness. I love it. Black and... Well, that I don't really love. That's quite a bloat you have there. Yeah. Wow, that's a bloated. Kind of bloat. What's up in there? What's up in that bloat? What's happening there? I don't know. I'm 59 years old. In the last couple of years, I got a belly, and nothing I do can make it go away, so I'm just living with it. You're 59? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well... I know you're not going to say how old you are. Well, I was born in 1949, so you do the math. I can't. Oh, you're incredibly old. 51. I'm 70, some, 72? I think I'm 72. Uh-huh. I'm a, yeah, I've been doing this a long time. Anyway, Haggatha, so let's get right to the point here. Uh, we're doing a sex tip show. We used to do wonderful shows, very, very uh, successful on YouTube. You can still watch them, audience. The Lesbian Sex Tips for the Gays. Many tens of thousands of listeners. Everybody wants sex tips. And we thought, Hagatha and I, you know, you can watch sex tips from these uh, ridiculous RuPaul queens, but they're like 12 years old. They haven't been with, uh, through, I, what do you mean, through the meat grinder as Hagatha, Turd, and I have. I mean, I'm 
a former lesbian, but I, I, as a sociologist and an anthropologist, I have studied the homosexual uh, world. I have been to bathhouses all over the planet uh, in order to do research for you. Hagatha has taken multiple loads and multiple uh, bathhouses, tea rooms. Um, what else? Where, where else have you taken loads? I mean, you've just fucked everywhere, right? You're a whore, truck literally. St truck stops, mm -hmm. the forest preserve, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, the mini arcades with the glory holes, mm -hmm. the arcades where you have to go in the room with the guy. That's a separate kind of arcade. Uh -huh. But all the different sexual arenas, I've I've gone through them. I spent my 40s in the bathhouses, so I have a lot to say about bathhouses that you won't hear anywhere else but on this podcast. And that's what we are going to do for you, audience, and I'm excited about this. Now, I know it's kind of cliche because everybody says, I'm excited, but I really am excited. I'm so excited. Honestly, my vagina is wet. I, I mean, it really is. I'm wet. I'm excited about this because I... I have so much knowledge. I've spent a lot of time in bathhouses. I know that Hag a Third Turd ha has also, and I feel like it's got to mean so It's What was it all for, if not to share this knowledge with our younger gays? And I think, or even older gays, right? Yes. So I thought we were going to do, we're going to do topics. And I think, I don't know how we're going to, right now this is just a live stream, but I think I might break it up into little, uh, little mini topics that we can sort of, post online and you know and make it go viral as it were not aids not aids just viral as in you know normal virus <laughs> covid 93 whatever no, we don't want to talk about that today no um because that doesn't really work with this uh so we're going to first talk about the glory holes so here so there's two topics for today uh well at this point we might do more depending on how things go but first topic is glory hole as a bottom. How does it work? Because I know when sometimes you go to a bathhouse and you you might go and you might say, what is this? You see like a wall with a hole and a door. And then it might have two holes high up. And then you might have a door. And then you might have another, uh, you might have another uh, room right next to that with adjacent holes and then also it has a door so let's say you're a bottom now a bottom generally means when it comes to the aural sex i say aural like a new yorker aural like i'm joy bihar aural. So, so if aural yeah. r rhymes with carl so if you want to if you want to suck a dick you're a bottom right agatha that's fair that's a bottom if you want an oral bottom is a suck a dick well, no, a glory no. hole bottom. Glory holes have arisen for the fact that gay men like a dick, but they don't like the man that's attached to the dick. I see. Why not? And that, well, the rest of the man is just worthless. But the dick, I mean, if you're a good bottom and you've got a busy glory hole, you can suck a dick, you can back up on it, did fuck through a glory hole? Mm -hmm. I was conceived through a glory hole. Okay. Everybody wants to hear about your conception. However, I want to stick to the topic, which at this point is a oral bottom glory hole. Oral glory hole bottom. So, let's say you want to suck a dick. You've never been to this uh, bathhouse before. Let's, let's take the, the example of Chicago Steamworks, which is reopening on July 18th. For some reason, they've postponed it. They're opening on Juneteenth which is very exciting for all the blacks in the gay June community. Teen? Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's to commemorate the end of slavery. We're going to suck a lot of dicks, and hopefully a lot of them are going to be black. Now, when you go... So explain to me, like, as a new bottom, you like, just pretend, go but go into the Wayback Machine, Hagatha. Pretend you've never been to the Hagatha, the bathhouse before, and you're there, you're an ingenue. How do you... Pretend you're in that situation. Tell us what you do. Sure. Well, the first thing I would say is if they're going to do it on Juneteenth, they should let black eyes come in for half price. That's a good idea. And if they're rocking nine inches or more, you get in for free because for every black eye you let in with nine decks, you've got 20 bottoms that are going to be satisfied. And that's your bread and butter. But that what bathhouse is the okay. bottom. Why is that? Because there's more bottoms than tops? 
No, because all they have to do is lay there on their stomach and they look like an electric pencil sharpener, the way they lay there with their ass up in the air. And, and they don't they have to worry about coming, night. right? Because you can be uh-huh. a, yeah. But we're talking about the um, the glory hole. So so let's say I'm a little bottom. Maybe I'm on my lunch break from the Mexican restaurant and I'm <sighs> I'm a little thumb-shaped bottom, right? You know the th- a thumb, they call it in Spanish a data gordo, which is a, a, a the big finger, right? A lot of these, you know, younger guys, they look like thumbs. But that's really beside the point. I don't want to get distracted. But you're a little uh, thumb and you're in the bathhouse the first time. Oh, my goodness. And you really want to suck a dick. And you see this, what looks like a closet, a black closet with three holes. What are the, why are there three holes, Hagatha? First of all, I see one hole downstairs by maybe the penis, okay. But why are there two more holes upstairs? What are those for? Now I haven't seen the two holes upstairs mm-hmm. in all my years of visiting very glory hole places. They don't have them upstairs. Well, they I do. I suppose you could kiss somebody. <laughs> They do have them at the Banana Video Emporium, so I'm told. So I don't know. I oh, think maybe they're very handled romantic. Right. I think maybe it's to hold on, so you can hold on for one more day while you get. The... Yeah, okay. I think it's to hold on. But the reason a uh-huh. lot of these places have more than one hole is men are different sizes. Mm. So mm. the ventilation mm. holes—that's what they call them. Legally, they're called ventilation holes, and they're allowed to have them. That's when they pay off the police. So but the different size mm-hmm. glory holes, different heights, so for different heights of men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. TJ's downtown has a big, a lot of black men come there. Uh huh. A lot of white men who love black men come there. I used to spend many a merry hour in that place, and it's right in the middle of a bunch of really expensive restaurants and bars mm. and then you've got this little hole in the wall place where you can go in you can buy sex toys magazines and in the back they have glory holes that's they wonderful. have the different heights there are they adjustable no they're there for there's one for tall man and there's one for medium sized man and there's one for a short man. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. know you said no children, so we won't go into the low down glory hold. But that's why they're there, different sized men. Um, Are you gonna have to edit that out? I can't edit a live show, Hagatha. Oops. I can't. You can't let him get me kicked off of this fucking thing. This is very important. All right. Well, I didn't go into detail. No, you're not going to do that at all, or I have to cut the stream. Okay. Stop it. No, you're just joking. Tell people you're just joking. I'm all just right. joking. But you can't do it. You can't even joke. This is the 2021. Joke. No jokes. No, no Michael joke. Jackson jokes either. Listen. So, okay. So, <sighs> so, but explain how it works. So you see, so you're, you're this little data gordo. You see this giant cabinet, two doors, both are open. What do you do? You want to suck a dick? How does it work? How do you get somebody, how do you get a dick to suck? It depends on how busy they are at that time of day. Okay. Okay. Those places operate. You put in, you go to the front, and for $5, they give you $5 worth of tokens, and that's how they get their money. Mm Mm-hmm. You can spend those tokens up in half an hour and then leave, or you can make them last all night long. They don't care how long you stay there. Okay. Because they've got their $5. Yeah. Now, after maybe eight hours, they may give you an annoyed look, and ex- in which case I go up and I buy more tokens just to let them know that I'm a paying customer. But... It all depends on how busy it is. Now, suppose I know there at TJ's they have eight booths, glory holes on either side. So when you're on the very end, you can look down through all the glory holes all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you get these queens that go in there and they spend a lot of money and they camp out in those booths and you can't get them out. They just spend one token after another after another, in which case there'll be people waiting outside the doors, just being very nonchalant, just standing there. And they watch the doors and they know who 
who went in the rooms, who's in the rooms that are being occupied. So it's very, it's almost political. You have to pick a side and then you decide you like the guy who went on the end. So you wait next mm. to the door next to the end so that that guy's dick will come through into the booth that you want to be in. So it all depends if there's only one person there to just go in the booth right next to him and wait for him to whip it out and stick it through. Okay, so if you're the bottom in my situation where you have this 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 person that wants to suck it, you should not go in the booth as a bottom until you see the top you want to suck go in to another booth, right? They have lights on the top of each door that shows whether they're occupied or not. Mm -hmm. And they have all of the stickers from the city of Chicago saying that they paid their lux their amusement tax. Oh, good. To have those arcades. Oh, good, because I don't think anybody would go there without this, without being, you know, having paid that. You wouldn't want to go to a to an uh, unregistered glory hole, right? Well, these places are all run by the mafia in Chicago. All of the strip clubs, the gentlemen clubs, mm. the arcades, some of the bars. It's all run, and they pay off all the police, and they're able to have these things. Did you ever go to the, um, this is an aside, did you ever go to the, I know you did, the Bijou over in North Avenue? Of course, I mean, I uh, went to the Bijou back in the 80s, back did, when Jeffrey Dahmer was getting people out of Carol's bars right next to the Bijou, and I was going there about the same time he was recruiting people to take back up to Milwaukee. Why didn't he pick you? I don't know. Mm. I was there. Dodged a bullet I don't there. Remember him, but I was there about that same time. Yeah. But the Bijou is closed down now. Well, you know what's interesting? You know what I it really is now? I'm sorry for the queens that weren't able to enjoy that place. It was three floors mm -hmm. of sucking and fucking, strippers, dancers, hustlers. Mm. Rough trade, bears, everything was there at the Bijou. Everything was beautiful at the Bijou. I got fucked. I got sucked. I sucked a big one at the Bijou. Do, 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 do. Up a deep and very narrow stairway. You, you can keep your day job, man. So I don't think Broadway's in your future there, hon. Yeah, but no shit. But the Bijou was a great place. But you know, do you know who owns it now? They tore their tore it tore it down. No, or they they gutted it. Joan Cusack. Joan Cusack owns it now. It's a cute little shop. I forget the name of it. I was there a week or two ago. Sometimes she's even there, and you can you can buy stuff from her. She sells jigsaw puzzles. Joan Cusack. She's a Chicago yeah. girl. Yeah, she owns she owns the the building. If you look up the address of the Bijou, it's now I forget. It's a lady's name. I can't remember the name of it. It's a cute little store. I just think it's so bizarre and. And ironic that this kind of uh, that this gay porn house was has is now um, kind of a gay role models uh, property. I don't know. I love John probably Cusack. a bride a bridal store. It's like a gift shop, like you know, cute gifts, that kind of thing, disposable oh. income. But anyway, it's just fun. I want to interview her and say, Joan, which I, she wasn't there when I went there. I think it might have been her daughter. But your tongue is huge. What happened? Oh, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Is that your tongue? Is that all you? My God. That's all me, baby. What happened? Did you get a bee sting? No, it's from lack. It's gone into atrophy from lack of use. Lack of ass eat. Lack of ass to eat. It's like oh, yeah. driving a car. If you leave a car sitting there for three months, honey, it's not going to start when you turn the key. And it's been yeah. a while since I've gotten laid. So and all my different parts have shut down. And if it's leather, it'll start to smell like old man ass. Yes. Okay, so back to the uh, back to the matter at hand, my vagina, and getting all hot and bothered about it. But so so you you pick the dick to suck, right? So you find and then. And then you uh, you suck the dick, and it, do you expect this person to come as a bottom? I mean, you, there, it sounds like there's only one top to every twenty bottoms or so, according to your Hagathonian statistics. So, do you how do you do you know how long? First of all, I guess a better question is, do you get to pick the dick? So, are you is it is like what if you want 
to suck, you want to know what the guy looks like. You just wait for the, and you, is there a way like to look through the glory hole to see what, what the guy looks like? Yes. Or you just, how does that go? Yes. That's part of it. You peek through the glory hole, mm -hmm. you get your finger, rub it around, the, you stick it through the hole, and you rub it back and forth across all the dried cum and oh. shed and grime. You put your finger in there and you go around in a circle. That means that you want them to stick their dick through. Mm. Now, if they're the occasional user and not a big sex pig, yeah, they will look back and see who's on the other side. And there have been times when they've taken a look at me and I put their dick through the hole. Mm. But most of the time, I looked pretty normal. And so I pretty much, they looked and they liked what they saw and they put their dick through. Now we're talking about glory holes at our cage now. We're not talking about the glory holes at steam hole, at Steamworks is a whole different story because you've got a different type of clientele that you've got your sex pigs there. No. So what's the difference? Because I was more, I, I don't really know much about the arcades. I'm more familiar with the bathhouse scene. So what about, I'm more curious for the bathhouse because, so you're saying a sex pig more is more likely to be at the bathhouse? Why is that? Than the, than the penny well, we'll arcade? We'll get to that in a minute. I'm talking right. about arcades right now. Go ahead. Sure. Pretty much arcades will have their regulars. For example, Mimi's was on West Belmont around 4,000 West. They've closed down. And that was near the Polish neighborhood mm -hmm. in the Latin neighborhood. Yeah. So yeah. would you have all those short, fat, twink, uh, Latin young guys would go there and camp out all night. Now that place, you go into a room in the back with the curtain, so they don't even know what you're doing back there. You could be doing anything back there, mm -hmm. but these queens wait. One of these Polish guys comes in. He's going to get his dick sucked, and he's going to come all in one shebang. Yeah. So they mm -hmm. wait around for these Polish guys to come in there. And since I have a flat face, a lot of them thought I was Polish. But then they figured out I was just another suck queen, just like they were. And then suck they queen. really didn't like me that much. Because I would literally spend hours there. They let me go outside and smoke. I'd go across to the deli and have a sandwich and go back. I would be there for like eight hours of the stretch. But you get those hot Polish girls. Polish men would come in, and that's what everybody was waiting for. Why? See, you wouldn't have Why? that at a bathhouse because a hot Polish man is not going to go to a bathhouse. What? Why? They'll what's so great in, about the Polish? They'll sneak into an arcade and they'll stick mm. their dick to a hole. They'll get it sucked, or they may suck a dick, but they're not going to go to a full-blown gay bar, or they're not going to go to Steamworks or Man's Country or any other bathhouse. There's another one called Man's World that is mostly men over 60, and I'm going to start going there if I get up there in Chicago. That place is still open. I don't believe it's still open. But I think that's for I, older men. I think they made it into a hotel, Hagatha. I'm sorry to tell you. Near the Rainbow Rink? Gone. Long gone. Oh, no. There's only uh, one well, left, I'm which is the Steam I'm Works. Not there anymore. Now there's there are no some there's there. some lesbian bathhouses which I can no longer attend, being female to male. Uh, yes, but but that's very interesting. So why is a Polish dick so desirable, Hangtha? Well, they're uncut for one thing, which which I don't really love. Mm. But these are guys in their 30s. They're five foot eleven. They're 165. They're clean cut. They speak English. They've got a good job. They got a wife and a couple of kids. And it's just the whole daddy thing, you know. They're just attractive men, and you know they wander in there, and you get to suck their dick. Now this one queen, I have to tell you this little story. Sure. There was another suck queen like me, and she was younger than me, and she was better looking than me. Mm. And she was working that place from top to bottom, cutting in front of queens, tripping people, you know, getting mm. to the, the right booth to get the hot guy. 
And anyway, she ran in and cut in front of me and uh, sucked off this black man. And you can listen and hear what's going on. And I knew he came. So she comes out wiping her chin off. And she's standing there. And the Polish guy came in. And he walked in front of me. And he went into this booth on the end. Well, that's to the end. So I went in on the end, which meant. And the queen went in. And anyway, I was cock blocking her. And she's sitting there. And that one, the glory holes don't go all the way down. They're only in between two booths. Mm. So she looks in, she sees me, and she's like, God damn it, son of a bitch. And she backs out and she leaves. And the guy comes in. I suck his dick. I got his load. And she got the old switcheroo. Mm. That's what she got that day. Because she's dealing with Hagatha. And I've been around a little bit. And I know how these things work. Mm. So is that the ultimate victory? Is that like the trophy? You know, I watch Pose. And they get trophies when they win the ballroom. So is it the trophy is the load? Uh Uh-huh. It is? Yes. So... How and many I had loads? Swallowed, I had mm. swallowed a load in a while and it tasted awful sweet and it surprised me. And I'm mm. like, my God, I haven't tasted a load in months. Now, here's one thing about Mimi's. Mm-hmm. Some of the queens there will back their ass up to those holes to get fucked. Yeah. And I've been known to do that. <clears throat> right. There. So you, you do a switcheroo the on the holes there and they don't clean the holes. They don't, all they do is sweep the floor. They don't clean the holes ever, ever. Hmm. So you have it. this Damn. build up. Uh-huh. It's like stalactites and stalagmites hanging off the glory holes and shed and grind and spit and come. Hmm. Yeah. It's quite a life. So those are arcade glory holes. We covered that pretty well, I think. Well, just as a reminder, this is Pride Month, and I don't know that there's anything to make me feel more pride than the thought of caked on stalactites of cum in a glory hole at Mimi's. Right? Well, Mimi's is gone. It's oh. gone. It's not there anymore. So they never Throw clean that? Okay, so... So no. you're... so. You, you're the bottom. Let's go to back to the scenario. So you're the bottom. You, you, you go into the glory hole. It's your first time, and a big dick comes there. And do you, is should it? Do you always expect it to be hard right away, or is it soft sometimes first? It's normally half hard, like a Hollywood loaf. Yes. And so what do you do to get it hard? Just suck on it, or is there some other technique? I mean, we're talking with new. About, we're trying to help new people here, Hagatha. So don't take any of your knowledge yeah. for granted. Step by step. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the glory holes are holes, and sometimes they're long ovals. In which yeah. case, you can tickle the balls <laughs> while you suck a dick. Is that helpful? And that'll get it harder. Or you can stick your finger up and you can put play a little stinky pinky, put a little finger in their ass and kind of tug it in, use that to tug them back and forth and back and forth. And that that is a good result. That would get a guy to come. Now, do you need permission so to stick it up? on what kind of hole. What kind of hole? Me? Well, how do you know if there's going to be duty in that hole? I mean, I, I don't think I would want to stick my finger in a hole, you know, when you don't know what's going to be up in there, in the hole. Might be duty. I don't want it. You want to get, you know, a brownie on your finger? You don't want that, do you? I'm not worried about it, and I don't think most queens are, frankly. Why? What do you do with you? Not. So you stick your finger yeah. up there, and then, I mean, that's a good question. It has shit in it. You, you finger the guy. Okay, then, well, let's forget about it. Put a tack in the shit for now. I don't want to go. I don't want to get too disgusting. But, okay, so right. so you get it hard. You tickle the bulls. If there's a, an oval or maybe... You, you was you do the stinky pinky, uh, and then um, you know we lesbians have a saying, you know one in the pink, two in the stink, or is it two in the stink, one in the pink? Uh, I can't remember, but it's any anyhow. Two uh, in the pink, one in the stink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you get a guy? So uh, you saying it's about one top for every twenty bottoms. So it sounds like a, a, a load 
in your mouth is a pretty big accomplishment for a, for a, for a cock sucking bottom. So how do you achieve this load? How do you get the load out? Tell us, Agatha. Well, if you're sucking a dick, mm -hmm. it's the same principle as when you're bottoming and you've got a dick in you. What you do is you make pressure with your mouth huh. as it's pulling out. Oh. And that's like you're milking it. Like a cow. You've got a pressure and you're pulling it out like you're squeezing milk out of a cow. Mm, and that's how, you, that's how you suck it. And that's normally what gets a guy to come. You suck in as it goes out, or in. Say that again. So, out is as suck. As they pull it out, you apply pressure. A suction. Yes. Or do you blow and make now, like? Am I doing like, or am I doing? <laughs> which one? <laughs> which one? You're not getting it. It's real simple. When it's pulling out of your yeah. mouth, you clamp down on it. Can you just show us? Do a profile shot and kind of show us how it works. Do you have an object? <sighs> But I don't see you sucking. <laughs> oh, that brings back memories. Okay, so reminder for next show, we need a we need props. I think a cucumber would be helpful or a carrot. Um, but so the suction is as you pull out, you're sucking, right? Yeah, and you deep throat it if you can deep throat it. Now I can deep throat a big dick. Now is deep throating only an issue for big dicks? Yeah. I mean, if you have a small dick, you can easily take it. You have one around seven and a half. That's when it starts to gag you. Mm. That you just relax your throat. And the angle, you have to get the angle on it right. Because mm. a lot of dicks, a lot more dicks than you would think are curved mm -hmm. or bend down yeah. or curved to the left or curved to the right. Now, that can be a lot of fun when you're getting when you're getting screwed because it kind of like rakes as as it rakes it as you get screwed but when you're sucking a dick you have to take into account is it curving or not and you have to just line your throat up with it that's all you have to do what design line your throat up with the cock how do you align your throat, throat? Yeah. oh by turning your head yeah it almost sounds like a snake right like when the snake opens his jaw and then they, uh, uh -huh. you know, and then they unhinged to eat a rabbit. It's the same thing for a di for a dick, maybe. Yeah, there's a place oh. in your throat where the dick goes past that uh -huh. place, and you don't gag. Now, is uh, that the is that the uvula? What does that has a name? The u uvula. I don't think it has a name, but it's some people it's seven inches in, some uh -huh. people it's nine inches. Some people don't have one at all. I recently on Grinder, I had a guy telling me that he didn't have a gag reflex. So is this the, the hangy thing that is like, the, it looks like a, a, not that. No. So it's almost like, because I've heard mentioned that there's this thing in the anus called the second hole. So if you yes. have a, if you, the if you're. Second, it's the second uh, section of, of the colon. Yeah. It's like you, you have the outer anus where you mm -hmm. put it in, and that's like a ring. Right. Then about nine inches in, there's another ring. So it takes a nine-inch dick to get to the second hole in the anus. But you're yeah. telling me, and I think this is breaking news, that there's a second hole in the, in the, in the mouth as well. Yes. But that's fascinating. I did, I did not know that. Uh, I did not know that. That's fascinating. So, so okay, so you've given us two wonderful tips so far to get a load. To angle the throat so that it can, assuming you can deep throat, they get it up in there, and then suck as the dick pulls out. And yes. as it goes in, it's just let it go in, right? Nothing big. Now, I'm naturally good at it, but mm. I take notes. Yeah. Like I told you, TJ's has the glory holes all the way down, so you can look through and watch the queen in the next booth sucking the dick on the other side, and you see how they get going faster and faster and faster. Mm -hmm. 
So speed is a big thing, too. So f speed, so is it that you want to make it go faster, slower, faster, slower, or is it a constant fast speed, or it just depends? It depends. You know, you have to be able to go past the lockjaw phase. Once you've been sucking a dick for about two or three minutes, your jaw locks up, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how big the dick is, whether it's small or big, just putting it in that position for three minutes it locks up. So what do you do about that? It's tough. You have, you just have to keep at it, even though it hurts. And mm -hmm. that sounds like the wall that runners hit. You know, when runners are yeah. uh, running and they hit, they like they're almost ready to pass out, and then they get a second wind. Is it kind of like that? Like you're almost hitting a wall. Very much so. Yeah. All right. So, so you've hit the wall, and then it's just a matter of getting through it, right? It's just like you got to pass through it break through the pain, and then you you keep sucking. So you want that load. You want that load. So I've seen people that do a lot of, do you do something with hands? Do you slobber on the dick? What's all that about? I've seen people no, do. No, you just take a little break. Like back when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. I messed around with some high school boys, and we I would give them blowjobs in the car. We'd go out in the country and get on some of these make-out places. And I would suck their dick, and they mm. would almost come, and I would get locked on, and I'd have to quit. Oh. They're like, oh, my God, I almost came. So I do it again. Mm. They're almost ready to come, and you get locked jaw. You can suck a dick for an hour that way. Yeah. Until you finally, they finally come, and you can relax and swallow it. So you would suck a dick for an hour to wait for a load? I mean, what's what is the, like, normal time to expect a load to take. How long are you willing to wait? As long as it takes. You would. But if it goes yeah. soft, do you let that do you let it go soft or you just move on to the next one? Well, they pull it out of your mouth and then you see them tucking it in their pants and immediately starts retreating and shrinking after mm. they come. I get it in there. But I'm not talking about when they come. I'm saying, what if it goes soft while you're sucking it? Does that ever happen to you? Check your yeah, catalog. If that happens, you just have to either decide that it's it's not going to happen no matter what and just basically yeah. get up and leave and leave them standing there with their dick hanging through the hole all soft. You just leave them there. And then they hear the door slam and they know you're gone and then they pull it out. So... Back to the other question. So what about hand usage? Does that help? What about slobbering on the side of the dick? Do you do any of those things, or do you just only do sucking? Well, what, if what it's thoughts? gigantic and you cannot get it all in your mouth, no matter how far you stretch your mouth out, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. go up and down the side and kind of jerk it off with your mouth with a lot of spit. Just because it's too big. That's all you can do. And you use your hand and you knob on the end of it. But some of these dicks, the only way to really enjoy it is to back up on it. Your mouth can only do so much. Right. Okay, so I don't want to get to that right now because that's anal sex, which is another episode. I, I mean, we could. <laughs> but so, um, okay. I put my teeth in really good. Did you see how nice my teeth look? Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you okay? Did they? Is that a? Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Oh no! Oh! <laughs> oh! You look like a scary witch lady! Oh my god! You could be an actress for witchcraft. Yeah. You could be in a witch movie. You should get casted for the witches too. You have all your limbs, right? I don't think they're going to do the, yeah. the baby hand this time. They got a lot of Anna Hathaway got a lot of shit for doing the baby hand uh, in the witches. But you could be a witch. You don't even need they're makeup. They're doing hocus pocus. Oh, good. Well, that was exciting to see that. So, what else can you tell people in order to get that dick to come? What other tips do you have? Any others? Just keep going no, at it? I don't know. I, I, that's pretty it. That's so, pretty much it. So it's start slower, faster, slower, faster. Adjust the speed to meet the need. And then you have wow. the uh, the deep throat if possible and angle the throat. And then you've got suction as you pull out. Um, do you, are you, and, and ride through that lockjaw, ladies. Get Just ride past the lockjaw. You can do it. 
You can get through it, right? Yeah. You can get through it. I wonder mm-hmm. maybe you should have a, you know, an Instagram feed for, you know, motivating people how to get through a, a blow job like, you know, um, you know, you can do it. You can do it. You can get through this. So we no. need to have a man with the real dick, but they can't show that on YouTube, can they? No. Well, they do allow there is a loophole for instructional videos. So but I think instruction isn't for sex. It's more like if you're showing people how to get a gonorrhea swab or something. So maybe we could do Just gonorrhea show. swabs. You want to do gonorrhea swabs? No, but I know that they show uh, condoms being putting on condoms. What about a dental dam? Yeah. Dental dam? I'm thinking of something else, but I'm not going to go down that road. But yeah, they show uh, clinical Mm -hmm. clinical things on YouTube, but um, we're not going to do that today. Right. Nothing clinical. We don't want to be too, we just want to be factual. So you've helped people learn how to suck a dick. What about getting, okay, no, the last question I want to ask about getting suck or sucking the dick is, you, you always swallow the load, or what's this, what do you do? You, or do you spit it out? What do you? What's the? Is it always the same, or what are your thoughts on this? It's pretty much you always swallow it. Sometimes mm-hmm. some of these older guys, their cum will have like chunks in it. Really? Yeah. Chunks. Like cottage cheese, and that you spit that shit out. Oh my god! But that's Wait a the second. older black men that are above sixty. Are you sure that's not an STD? No, it's just, it's their age. So they probably haven't come in six months. Is it an indication of like a prostate issue? No, it's just from buildup of cum from not coming for months and months. And they hobble down to the arcade and they get their dick sucked and it's got curds in it. You don't want to swallow that shit and it tastes funky too. It's really kind of gross. So I don't always suck an old dick. You mean curds? Sticks don't mm. age. But apparently, that's the one thing God made men, and He made them so their dicks don't age, and they can get a thirty-year-old woman pregnant when they're eighty. But they do. But there are curds in whey, like Little uh-huh. Miss Moffat. So Little Miss Moffat is that a metaphor for cock sucking? Then do you think? Actually, there used to be a place where girls would dance, and it was called Little Bo Peep. Mm-hmm. And then there was another one called Puss in Boots, where the, it's like that Madonna video. The partition goes up when they put man, money in it, and then it goes down. And the girls dance. There was a place like that up by diversity. Isn't that Tina Turner, dance. private the private dancer you're talking about? Yeah. Mm. And what's neat about that little glory hole place, it closed down, but the straight Lincoln Park men who liked to play around a little bit, would go and watch the women get rock hard and then stop and get their dick sucked on the way out. Mm. I sucked many a very good-looking yuppie Todd guy there at that place, but it closed down, unfortunately. There was a man who worked there was like 400 pounds, and he had this big neck goiter, mm. and it was always seeping out, and it stunk like death. The goiter stunk? That's the glory hole where I put the cigarette in the man's pee hole. Yeah. Right. Um, We aren't going into that. That's a little borderline. Well, you can listen for that on Yeast Radio. Just search for Hagatha, and you can find that story multiple times. Um, Yeah, multiple times. This notion. I'm proud of it. There's two things I'm kind of stuck on. Number one is the idea of dicks not aging. Number two, and I don't mean two is in duty, but number two is in the number. Not the duty. Um, this, what's in the curds? What is it? The the cum curd. You say you suck an old man. These are usually, you're saying this is a racial thing. They're usually a certain race that have these chunks. Usually older black men. Cum is a mixture of two liquids. This is a little bit scientific. Oh, we love science here at Yeast. Go ahead. There's a clear liquid. Like men who have vasectomies, they come, but they don't come the white part. They only come the clear part. I didn't know that. And with these older men, the white part sits too long, and it congeals, and it turns into little globules. 
and that mixes with the clear semen and uh -huh. so you get that chunky variety is it like what's in a tide pod yeah very interesting so this is something i didn't know you're really opening my eyes now back to the idea now i'm i'm intrigued this this idea of men's dicks well obviously men women don't have dicks well they do we do sometimes but we keep them on shelves um the idea of penis is not aging i like that because i was talking with somebody a friend of mine we had a discussion and it was about this idea you know you see a lot of times twinks will go for uh you, know, you see a hot young gay guy maybe 25 and he only wants another young gay guy who's as hot as he is but what uh -huh. i th what we were sort of discussing is the fact that really those people often don't know how to fuck and a lot of times i'm doing a straight and gay old people know how to fuck better so you you know you may think you may see an old man and say oh that old man ha ha he's old he can't do nothing with his dick well it may take him a little longer to get hort hag a third turd but he knows how to fuck he knows how to please your hole he knows how to get to the second hole because why he's experienced thoughts well, they can feel that that second G spot, that second uh, mouth, a uh, nether mouth. Mm. You have your nether mouth as your asshole, but there's that other one. They can feel bumping up next to that. And some men will just quit and figure I'm deep enough. But some of these older guys, they know that there's more to be had, so they mm. shove ooh, deeper. And yes. they pop through that second orifice. Yeah. And that way yeah. they can go balls deep. Yeah. And don't you agree with my premise, though, that I'm basically saying that a young twink should not dismiss an old man. In fact, he should probably seek them out. Don't you think? Yeah. A lot of these younger twinks that are on meth or they're on GHB or who knows what the hell they're on, but they're a sexual enhancer drug. Mm. And frankly, I've been in that position mm. before in my life. And all you care about is how big it is. You don't care who it's on. Only right. thing is, for me, it would kind of take the air out of my cells if it was obviously a queen. Uh, there was obviously a bottom and they stick their dick through and it was really super big. I, that would kind of take the air out of myself. I wouldn't enjoy it as much as if it were like a gangbanger type. Okay. Very interesting. So what are your recommendations yeah. to young queens who want to get a good uh, load? Do you have any overall recommendations? Like what kind of man do you want to seek? Well, we've already covered all the different ways to give head. We haven't talked about anal sex much yet, but I'm really more of a expert on all things anal. I mean, I like to suck a dick, but okay. especially if you're on these drugs, you want to end up with it in your ass. And that's why some of these places, they'll trick you. Now, I've done this. You're sucking a dick. Some guy on the other side has no idea. All he knows is it feels good that there's a mouth on his dick. And then all of a sudden, you run and you switch. And you yeah. ran back on it, and before they know it, it's in your ass, and they figure, well, I'm already inside. I might as well finish. Right. But some of them get really mad when you do that because it gets shit on their dick. And it's mm. not like you had a conversation beforehand, though. How do you feel about anal sex? Well, Would you wait like a second. To put it in my ass? Okay. Okay. First of all, let's switch. So we'll talk, we'll just change a little. So instead of doing top, Glory hole. We'll just, I mean, t we're going to talk about being a bottom, f getting fucked in the glory hole. That's our next topic. That's what we're talking about. So you're saying that you do a flip switch. Is there a, is there a word for that? I just say flip switch. Is there maybe a word? I don't know. Like a, a, no, a term. No, there's no word for it. It's okay. just the way you trick them. So why, if you're a bottom and you want to do the flip, why on earth would you have a shitty asshole and stick your asshole on the dick? Wouldn't you... I mean, wouldn't you clean out your hole first? I don't understand. Okay. When I was a younger queen, I didn't always clean out before I got fucked. Okay. And they would pull their dick out, and it would be covered in shit. Oh. You'd just hear them going, ugh. 
oh, and they just have to tuck it in their underwear and zip it up and live with it till they can get home and take their clothes off and take a shower. Mm. But that's bad karma. That's happened to me. I've had queens shit on my day before, and I don't like it, so therefore I don't want to subject anyone else to that. So what I do is yeah. I'll get me a 20-ounce soda, and I'll chug that soda. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go in the bathroom, fill it up with water, spread my cheeks, aim it right in my hole, and squeeze. And that's just the same amount of water as a fleet enema. What you size bottle are we talking about? 16 ounce? 20 ounce. A 20 ounce. So one bottle, 20 ounce. Soda 20 water, ounce. You drink the soda, you fill it up with water. Uh -huh. You just squeeze it and get it up in there and you just clean out. And, you know, we've talked about this many times. Mm -hmm. The fact that a true top can tell if a queen is cleaned out. They know it. They How? can sense it. How? They know she's prepared. She has a look on her face that says... Confidence. Con it's a confidence. It's a con game. So I now I always clean out, you know. Finally. Finally. But so, question. What if you don't want to drink the soda? Can you just, like, put a Pepsi and just oh, shake it? And then what happens when you just... Would that help? Like, you just shake it and then... Put your finger on it and then stick it in your hole, and wouldn't that just douche the whole thing real quick? No, it's better to use water. The it's acid sticky. in the soda can kind of burn and not in a fun way. Now, mm. the thing about TJ's is they had a, a hose in the bathroom that you could turn on and stick up your ass and, and really douche out good. Mm. I don't think it was put there for that purpose, but um, I've used it for that. What was it for then? If not for cleaning your house, just your to fill the buckets up, to fill the buckets mm -hmm. up, to mop the place. I see. Well, but at least I they were just mopping. Stuck it in my hole. But if, it up. if they weren't even cleaning the glory holes, you really think they're going to mop? I don't know. Mm -hmm. They um, don't clean the glory holes, but they mop mm. because a lot of queens will leave their underwear behind if they shit their underwear. Oh, good. Or maybe they had a dirty dick and they used their underwear to clean their dick off. A lot of times you'd see panties and stuff down. you see shit and smell it. Yeah. So question. Some of these queens are nasty, man. They're yeah. just filthy. I can see that. I'm uh, glad I'm not like that. No, not at all. Um, so let's say you are, um, in the bathhouse, not talking about your, uh, arc penny arcades. You're in the bathhouse. You're a top. You fuck a bottom and it gets shit all over your dick. How do you, what do you do? You've got your towel. You just, do you wipe it off with your towel? How do you, what do you do? What you do is, is you get your towel, you wrap it around the backside of you uh -huh. You hold it out to what you hold both of you hold it close, but you hold it out so it isn't touching your deck and you walk that way to the shower. Can you do a little demo? You know, the bottoms, the bottoms see that and they're like, oh, I see he's a top. He just sucked him, but he's got shit on the stick. He fucks uh -huh. rock. And then they'll chase you down or they'll, they won't leave you alone until they get fucked. So it's. It's so, like catnip to a bottom to see somebody walking with their towel out like that. See, this is shocking to me because to me that would be disgusting. But you're so you're saying you fuck an asshole, you got shit all over your dick, you go to the shower, you've got this towel out, and there's an odor I'm sure following you. Now this to me would be disgusting. And just like wearing the scarlet letter. But what you're saying is no. In fact, it's the opposite. That bottoms see that and they just get horny because that means you're a raw, raw top. You're a raw top. I think I'm going to say it like a New York uh -huh. raw, raw, raw top. And you are not only that, but you are uh, prey. And that means hey, you're going to be sought after. So they want you, even though you got shit all over your dick. Are they going to wait till you shower and wash it off at least? Yes. Thank yeah, God. No way. No way. But they'll follow I mean, you around because they saw it, you with duty on your dick, and that's a turn on, you're telling me. 
they know that dick's been in their ass, so they know they can count on you to be a confirmed top. A confirmed top mm. is a rarity, but they do exist. What does that mean, confirmed top? Well, if they're on Grinder, they don't send any pictures of their ass for one. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Rick is a confirmed top. <laughs> <laughs> He's 400 pounds. He's on Chatterbait. But he's not going to see this, so I can say his name. But no, he's a confirmed top. He's never been screwed in his life, not even once. And I'm like, aren't you even curious? I mean, there are straight men getting pegged by their girlfriends because they've discovered their prostate and how yeah. good it feels to get that prostate massage. Right. You know, the, let me ask you this. Do you think it shows a certain percentage of being gay for a straight man to get paid to buy his girlfriend. Do or I think does he it... just like the way it feels and it doesn't matter whether it's a dick or not? You know, I once went Are to... Are they more apt to get fucked if they're... I can tell you this. I think it's a uniquely American um, thing. Now, I say this because I went to... Uh, travel, did some research in Berlin a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. I interviewed this woman. She's a dominatrix named Dominique. She owns her own fetish club. It's a beautiful place. It's like a bathhouse for straight men and straight people, not straight wow. men. And it's wonderful. They have jacuzzis. Everybody's naked. It's one of us. People fucking everywhere. She said, the thing is, Madge, American men, not European men, American men always want to get fucked up the ass. Just the Americans. It is a uniquely American, and we're talking straight men. American straight uh -huh. men love to get fucked up the ass. And I don't believe, no, I don't believe they're gay. I mean, maybe some of them are. But I think it has to do with the power trip and just being an asshole. And the American culture makes white straight men, you know, these basically evildoers that fuck over everyone, fuck over society, make money at the expense of everyone, you know, screw, nasty to women, you know, fuck a woman, get an abor make her get an abortion and all this, yep. And I think it's yeah. just like, it's just like these men, the men that are submissive and have dominatrixes, a lot of them are very powerful men and I think maybe yeah. that's why. They uh, want to turn the tables. Now when I worked yeah. in, in the pornography industry, whenever we had a straight guy doing porn, I would say 95% of the time they wanted to be a bottom. You would ne I don't remember, actually 100%, I don't ever remember having a straight man come to porn that wanted to be a top, ever, in a gay porn, never. I, I don't recall that. They always want a bottom. Does that mean they're gay? I don't fucking know, but they like, you know, it's, I guess it's, it just feels good. It just feels good, and a dildo only feels so good, right? You ever yeah. fuck a dildo, hag a third? How does well, a dildo when I compare was on to George, dildo? I had some big ones. Big dildos? I spray painted them all black. Is that racist? Yes, but the thing is, I notice now that they don't. They used to have black dildos in the store and then white dildos. Now they have shit brown dildos. A lot. Like, there's a store, uh, I forget I've the name of it, those. and they have shit brown dildos. And I'm thinking, this is quite a revelation. Like, people aren't even hiding, they're just not going to wash their dildos. I don't get it. Or can you not get the stain out if it? Like, if you have a white dildo and you get shit you on it, you put it in the dishwasher. What put if you don't? Put your dildo have... in a dishwasher. I don't have a dishwasher. I do. But I don't. What am I supposed to do? Bleach it. Do the best you can. So these brown ones. Why do you mm -hmm. think they're brown? I think because people don't want to see the duty. Well, what that do you think? kind of brings up what I said about black bottoms, but no, no, no. I don't want to appear racist, so I won't finish that thought. Oh. Well, okay, so back to the anal sex. So, so let's say you're you're my same thumb, and you know my new thumb to the bathhouse. I'm not talking about just for right now. I'm not talking about your penny arcade, but you go to the bathhouse and you want to get you want to get fucked good. How do you pick out? How do you how do you get it? What do you do? What do you look for? What do you do? How do you get it? And then how do you get the nut finally? Well, again, that depends on the personality involved mm -hmm. and how ugly you are. Let's just Somebody say I am a thirty-five year old, um, square shaped but not ugly, not fat, like somebody who would maybe bust tables illegally. 
Well, in the bathhouse, there's a lot of different ways to broadcast that you're presenting, that you're ready to be thought. Okay. A lot of those ugly coins, they lay down on the bed, they put their head in the pillow, mm. and they don't show their face. They'll sit there and hide their face the whole time they're getting fucked because they're ugly. But mm. they have a nice ass. This one queen lived there. Mm -hmm. She was there every time I was there, and I was there alone. She was ugly, but she was getting fucked 10 times a night. I'd see her going to the shower, washing her ass off. Every 15 minutes, this queen's getting fucked. Mm -hmm. She must have had some nice control and made it tight by squeezing it because she got all the top. I was really jealous. What if you're old and ugly? ugly? Can that still work? What? If you're old and ugly. It still works. Depends what if you, on your body. But what if you've got that loose ass skin where it's kind of like, you know what I mean? Like almost like the skin moves separately from the ass, like it's like like a doily. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Would that work? I don't think that would work on that kind no, of ass. No, nobody wants to fuck a flat ass that's had all the air let out of it. Right. Now, my butt used to be like that. When I first started my mm. HIV treatment, my pills made my face came in, but they mm. also made my ass go flat. Like Which a flat tire. Really, yeah, nobody wanted to fuck me. It was completely flat. But in the years since, I've been on different medication, and it's come back, and I have a normal ass now. So your ass actually returned when you switched meds. You it didn't returned. have to turn. You it didn't got have to, pounded flat, and then it came back. Did you have to put like pump silicon in it, or it just went? It just, no, it just came back. Huh. My face came back partially, not really all the way. Well, you posted a picture of me from the 90s, and I looked awful. I don't remember posting that. You did on the chat room. It's an old picture of Hagatha, and it was me in my striped shirt, and my face was all caved in. And I really felt sorry for myself. That's rough to go through that. You go from being the cute, one of the cuter guys in the room to being one of the uglier guys in the room. And you yourself said that I lost my looks within... One year I lost my looks, and you said that to me, and it really hurt my feelings. Mad. Well, but you look wonderful now. <laughs> you look great now, especially without your teeth. I mean, so. What okay. about my teeth? I mean, I say you look wonderful now, though, especially without your teeth. I mean, that's just. Does that help you able to get mans when you are removing? Do they want you to remove your teeth, do you ask? I would imagine that'd be a much better uh, BJ, right? It is a much better, but you have to ask. The last guy I asked was really sweet about it. I was paying him. I paid him to come over and spend time with me. I met him mm. on Grinder, <clears throat> And I just said, look, I have false teeth, and if I suck your dick, I'm going to have to take him out. And he said, that's fine. Go for it. So I took him out, and I sucked his dick, and he came. Did you suck so, a yeah, dry? I sucked a dick without my teeth. Mm. But I ate his ass with my teeth, which mu must have felt really strange. But they didn't, you didn't like let them get stuck in there. Like, cause I would imagine you could eat an ass and then your teeth fall out and they just get stay in the asshole. And then you go and your teeth are still there. They get stuck. You have to pull them back out and pop them in your mouth. It's part of the territory of having false teeth. I was talking I'm not going to pull them out again. I was, you know, uh, Caitlyn Jenner was on The View today. And Deborah, oh, no. my friend Deborah Wilkerson, she said, God rest her souls, she said, Madge, did, did Caitlin's teeth pop out? I think her upper teeth popped out during the interview, she said. I have yet to verify this, but yeah, I believe her her tit, her tit, her teeth popped out. I said, are you sure that's not Hagatha? Because it sounds uh -huh. like maybe Hagatha's really, are you really Caitlyn Jenner, I guess, is the good question. You kind of look like her. Well, I have an eye for politics, so could be mm -hmm. me. You're going to run for office? Tell. We'll see how I do in uh, California. Well, I already talked. Uh, I just submitted a piece for the Orange Pill podcast, and I don't want to give too much away, but I did make an official announcement that it's actually part of the reason why I'm doing this female to male transgendered uh, uh -huh. transition is I'm going to be running for public office. But I'm not going to. You have to listen to the Orange Pill podcast or watch it on Sunday uh, to find out what office. But I'll give you a hint. Um, he's very, The person I'm trying to upseat 
is extremely obese. And during COVID, we can't have obese governors. Oops. You know, oops. I don't mean Illinois governor is 500 pounds brisker. Well, perhaps I'm talking about her. Who knows? You'll have to listen to the orange pills to find out. But I thought it'd be a good move for me to, to transition. Well, that reminds me, though, uh, a little jumping around because I have more questions. Um, if you're have, now that it's so socially acceptable for the transgenders everywhere, um, I imagine it's fine. Can a female to male such as myself go to Steamworks? And if so, what do you do when I stick my my uh, my uh, neo penis? Because that's what a woman's penis is called when they transition. Uh, what what hap- What do you do if you get a neo penis? What's the etiquette? Like somebody sticks a neopenis in your face in a glory hole. Well, first, let me say, I've been at the front desk where there have been women Mm -hmm. in their Mm -hmm. 30s with the long hair and the cocktail dress and the little bike dress begging to be let into Steamworks. Mm -hmm. And they're just saying, we won't touch anybody. We just want to watch. And they threw those girls right out on their ass. Yeah. And I love seeing that. So I think if you came in with breasts... No, I'm talking about a female-to-male transgender who passes for a man, fully okay, clothed. Okay, but, but, but has a neopenis. A neopenis, yeah. What do you do when you get that neopenis in your face as Hagatha von Taterbugs? What would you personally do? How would you handle that? I think it's a good question. We're talking to kids here, Hagatha, and this is the reality. What do you do when you get a neopenis in your face? And glory hole. Do you tickle the ass? You tickle the ass I suppose you could suck on it. Mm-hmm. Like a little nipple. You could suck on it. Mm-hmm. I've seen those. They're pink. They look like a like a dog's dick when it comes out, like a lipstick. I've seen those neo penises and you just have to be into that. I'm not into clitorises that have been engorged with that. Um, but the whole thing about transgender people really confuses me. We're not going to go into it, but I am attracted to these female to males. Like me. Because they're so cute. Thank they're you. so butch. Thank you. The way they carry themselves, mm-hmm. their voice. I mean, they really are little men. Thank you. And they're very uh, adorable, and Man. you want to kind of spoon with them and kind of hold them, but. They don't have a dick. They have an, a neo penis. And right. It's not, yeah, and I suppose if you were fearing feeling charitable, you would go down and eat them out and suck on that thing. Uh, I've but, never done it, but never say never. So what do you eat out then, exactly? When you say eat out, what are you eating out, exactly? The pussy. But what if there's no put? I thought there's no more pussy if it's a neo penis. They, they remove the vagina. They remove the vagina. There's no hole there. So well, you eat then I guess you just lick around it, and do they have fake balls, too? Yeah, that's extra. But, yeah, you can have fake balls. Well, they don't call them. There's a word for that. Yeah, you can get We talked balls. about this mm-hmm. on the podcast. On, on Yeast Radio. Chatter. On Yeast Radio. Podcast. Yeah. You can look it up on yeastradio.com. The most recent episode, I believe, we talk about a, a neopenis. about the different procedures and the names of them and what names. they can can do so how would you go about let's just say i don't like a neo penis how do you what do you say to that person no thank you move on yes yeah that's fair hmm. you turn them over and you fuck them in the ass so what tricks can you tell us as a bottom to get the nut you want to get a load i imagine every bottom wants a load but many of the tops am i right many tops their goal is to not come while the bottom wants them to come because the, the when the top comes he's out of commission it's a battle yeah. It's a battle between the tops and the bottoms. Mm. And it happens around two o'clock, three o'clock. These tops are going around sticking their dick and all these asses, but they don't come. They save their Hold cum. on. Two o'clock in the morning or, or afternoon? Two or three in the in at night after the bars have closed. Mm-hmm. And that's the battle. The it's a battle because all these queens want these guys to come, but these mm-hmm. guys don't want to come because then they have to go home. Right. They wait till 6.15 right before it closes, and that's when they know the different bottoms that are going to be able to get their dick off and they're going to be able to come. But these but these mm. poor queens, maybe they don't want to stay there till 6.15. 
So it's like a battle. Yeah. The bugs are trying to get trick the tops into coming by squeezing, manipulating, poking, stretching, all these different things. Okay, that's what I want to know. Like, what are the techniques? You want the nut. What do you do? You're the bottom. You want to win the Game of Thrones. The Game of... What rhymes with Thrones? It sounds like uh, anal sex. I don't know. Game of... Thrones. Game of Groans, sure. You want to win the Game of Groans. Groans. Okay. Game well, of the bone. thing still applies with most of these queens don't understand is they will keep their assholes squeeze it as tight as they can the whole time they're getting fucked. Mm -hmm. And that's better than just a loose ass to where you can't even feel that it's in there. Mm. There's nothing more disappointing to have a really, really hot young tween take it up the ass and you can't even feel it because it never occurs to them to squeeze their ass or do anything special. Well, maybe their walls fell out. out. You know. Well, that's a whole nother topic. Sure is. But the best thing to do is keep it loose when they shove it in. Then mm. when they're pulling it out, mm -hmm. that's when you squeeze and tighten so it's like milking it. Like mm -hmm. the old man milking the cow like we did with our mouth. Mm -hmm. With the oral sex, you do the same thing with your butt. Mm -hmm. Is that like a Kegel? Is that the same muscle as a Kegel? To no. Not to. That's your rectum that you're squeezing. Yeah. As we all know, you know, mm. I caught syphilis of the anus. And mm. it was like little polyps that had been cut off. Mm -hmm. And it lasted three months. Mm -hmm. I could not walk anywhere. I was mm. in the most pain. I was always sitting in a hot bath, soaking my syphilis hole in the hot water and finally they found out what kind of syphilis it was i got the medication and when it healed it made it super tight so it hurts me just to shit so you're like a virgin so i don't know when i'm gonna be able to get a big black cock up in anymore. does it bleed no so you're like a virgin on the madonna video yeah i'm like a virgin again people mm. pay good money for that I got it naturally. Mm. Just get syphilis and skip the operation. So you took a sitz bath, and that helped? The sitz bath? What kind of... Did you use salt? Epsom salts? No, that burns. No, mm. you just take it. You just soak your hole, and man, mm. God, that, it was the worst pain I've ever been. I will tell you this, because, you know, well, sometimes I get a painful rectal itch. Nothing helps me better whether it's a painful rectal itch, a hemorrhoid, then I take a big bag of those Walgreens bath salts, and they're cheap. They're cheap. Mm -hmm. Take maybe a, two cups of it and stick it in a warm bath. I am just good to go. My asshole does, it's just, it's like I forget. You know how sometimes you get a headache, you take aspirin, and you're like, where did my headache go? I'm like, uh -huh. where did my, it's the same thing. Where did my painful rectal itch go? It's gone. I mean, the sitz baths are wonderful, Hanga Third, and I really like the Walgreens, the, the one with the eucalyptus. It's it's wonderful for that. Can't say enough about that. Well, Lavender. When I was when I was twenty three, mm. I got screwed at the Forest Preserve, and I got mm. screwed, and they left me on top of a giant ant hill, mm -hmm. and I was drunk and passed out. And the next day, I woke up and I had ant bites all over me. But that person that screwed me had anal warts, and when I was in drug treatment for a year. I had these anal words and I had to go to the hospital and get them all cut out. But I did sit spats for that. He had anal, anal wards, wards but how did he? White. Okay, Pardon? so how did he give you anal wards? If he had anal wards and he fucked you with his penis, how did he give it you the anal wards? It was on his stick and it transferred to my ass. Okay, so you weren't I like rubbing each wards. other's assholes together like scissors. You weren't scissorsing. No, it was his dick had warts and it transferred to warts. my ass. And even though I had these anal warts on mm. my ass in treatment, I was still getting screwed by these guys yeah. because it wasn't co-ed. The men all stayed on one side for a year. The women stayed on a completely different campground. And so I had all these boys to myself and they were all hitting me up and I was getting screwed with the warts. So we, I spread anal warts during treatment. This was just straight men? Yeah. So if it was co-ed, they would have been f having sex with women, not you. Yeah, 
it would have been sneaking. Did you wear this? They were sneaking over to my bedroom at night. Did you get dolled up like you are now and look all pretty? Were you like this? Do you looking all pretty like you're doing right now? Hi, fellas. No. No. Here I am. Hagathurt is here, ready for you. I've got a bumpy pussy. Bussy. I've got a bumpy bussy. You want some? Good pussy for sale. Yeah. Good pussy for sale. Hi. No, they were just desperate, and they knew I was a willing, eager partner. So, yeah. yeah they would approach me very slyly because mm. they couldn't come out and say, let's have gay sex. Because then I could report them for making an inappropriate comment to me. Mm -hmm. See, it was that kind of behavior modification treatment center. And it kept me clean and sober for many years. But I was screwing around all these different guys in there. So back, to the, ball. back to, to the matter at hand, my fishy, smelly fingers. Um, what, would, what are some tips you can say, tell to get that nut? When it's 2 in the morning, it's the game of... Uh, Moans, whatever we called it, game of bone. Well, how do you get the? What do you? you game you, of moan. Yeah. What do you do? Well, how do you get that nut? Techniques, please, Hagathird. Well, what you have to do if it's early on in the evening and they don't want to come, but you want to get them to come, they'll pull out and quit before they come. They can sense it and they don't want to come. It's like edging. You yeah. heard about that? Oh, People I know. Are into edging. Mm -hmm. They almost mm -hmm. come, then they pull back. And they, yeah. I think it's the stupidest thing that ever happened on the earth. Okay. I, I'm not into that. The guys that usually are into edging are really ugly. But they'll pull their dick out before they come. But if you're there at 6.15, just do the normal milking. You back up on it. You push back. You ram it in, ram it in, ram it in. So your butt is just like slapping up in your balls or slapping up against that wall. And you hear them, they're breathing heavy. They smell the cum from the last guy and that really gets them off. And mm. all of a sudden, you just feel that anal explosion. You feel it shoot inside your guts and drip down the sides. And you know that you've, uh, you've had a successful fuck. And you go in the bathroom like I do and sit it out and play with it and eat it. You don't really eat it. I do. Out of your My own. My ass is clean. We've established that. Have we? Have we established? I sit it out of oh, my right. hand and just eat it. Yes. I'm not trying to go for shot value. I'm not trying to be gross. I'm just telling you what I do. Why wouldn't you want to eat it? You earned it. Mm-hmm. Why not just leave it? So, you could just leave it there, shit it out, or let it drip down your leg. Leave it for the next guys. But you would never yeah. just let it go into the toilet. Too much of a waste. I would go to the bathroom and play with it, yeah. No. And then I'd be on to the next guy. I no, wouldn't shit it all out. You said play with I'd it. leave it a little bit in there for lube for the next guy. What do you mean play with now, it? Now, I know like... we're talking to young, impressionable young men. Yeah, And if you're on prep, you can experience that, but you're also leaving yourself open to other STDs. And I've had everything you can have. Great. I've never had chlamydia. Is chlamydia only for women? No, you can get it. I'm sure you've One had it. I forgot. I don't know. You'd have to Google it. I think it's the same as gonorrhea. I think it's like, I think, and I could be totally wrong here, but I think it's one of those where men don't ha typically have symptoms. So that's probably why you think it's for women, because I don't. I think it's rare to be symptomatic with chlamydia if you're a man, but um, as a woman you do. So I don't know what it does for a man except let you transmit it to somebody else. I imagine it's not really good for you to have that one. But congratulations on never having gotten it, though I think it's probably more likely you got it you forgot. I think that's more likely. Don't you think? Yeah, I might have had it and forgot yeah, about it. You might have forgotten. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite STD? AIDS. <laughs> Why? Got rid of a lot of loose weight, a lot of dead weight in the 80s. We lost a lot of queens that are wasted space. Jesus. They're gone now. Well, a lot of really good ones, too. Come on. They backed up on their own dick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
says your family. Much less competition now. Well, well, Agatha, I don't know. Do we need to talk about anything else before we end for today? We have covered a Actually, lot. Actually, I've had to pee for the last 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Do you pee from your vagina? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you just do me a favor? I want another uh, twirl. Can you twirl for us like they do in that movie about Roger Ailes? I want to see a couple twirls. Like go back further back, further back, further back. Oh, yeah. More. Oh. Oh, so it only goes... Oh, so it's not a full dress. It's just a top. It's a blouse. Oh, it's a blouse. So you, so you're like RuPaul. You only dress from the from. The, that's very pretty. You're only dressed from the, from the uh, waist up, for us. Like you're, <clears throat> you're like RuPaul because that's what she does. That's good. I hope you can find a skirt that matches it, though. Where'd you get that blouse? Salvation Army. Very pretty. How much did you pay for it? Four fifty. Not bad. Not bad. What's your size? Your dress size, in case I find anything. Well, this was in the extra large section. So you're in XL. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, because there's a okay. store. There's a store here. Uh, out of the closet. It's pretty new. You probably since you've been here in Halstead. It's a. It's an AIDS charity that sells used clothes. They have a lot of dresses there. I've got most White of them. Elephant. No, it's called Out of the Closet. It's a new one, right on the right oh. on Halstead, and okay. uh, next to the paint store. And uh, they don't have nice eight, stuff, eight, decent eight, stuff, right? Eight dollars for a nice dress, yeah. Yeah. So if I find something sure. in the XL, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll see. Anyway, I got this. this has been really enjoyable. I thank you very much, audience. Uh, I would like you to uh, go to yeastradio.com if you like this. Uh, send us donations. That's a uh, dollar sign bloated lesbian on the cash app bloated lesbian. And I want my cut. I want my cut. Well, you need to get a cash tag. Do you have a cash app? No. Yeah, we need to get your cash app tag so you can get tips, you know, like your private dancer should. I will work through that uh-huh. later. I'll help you with that offline. Yeah. Because then you get, you can be Hagatha. My makeup bus. costs $45, Madge. I don't know if you got your money's worth. <laughs> But I do like it. <laughs> Thanks, Hagat. To see you later. All right. Bye. bye. Let me turn this off. <laughs>